Hello. If you create circuits, you'll often be dealing with various data acquisition, memory, and other specialized ICs that you program or talk to using various standard protocols like UART, SPI, I squared C, JTAG, or whatever. But during development, I'll usually be programming microcontrollers or flashing FPGAs, writing or dumping flash, and most importantly, testing my understanding and implementation of chip APIs. And I want to do all this using a desktop computer. Now, over time, I've accumulated a ton of programmers and used everything from this little USB to I2C interface module to resorting to busting out an Arduino and coding and hooking that up. But there's a better way. FTDI's FT2232H is a dual USB to multi-purpose UART FIFO IC, and it is a very nice way to get a whole lot done. Plugged into your computer, it'll show up and be usable by a host of tools and libraries. One of my favorites is PyFTDI, and I'll show some of that later. Now, there are a ton of pre-built modules for the FT2232H, and I sure haven't tried them all, but the one I use and recommend is the Tigard. Tigard? Tigard? I crowdfunded this little module a good while back in like 2020, and it took some time for me to start using it, but I'm loving the thing. Now, to me, the main advantages of this board are voltage levels, anything between 1.8 to 5V is supported. It's well designed to work as is with a bunch of tools. Now, this includes PyFTDI, but also FlashROM, OpenOCD for JTAG, IcePROG to use with Ice. 40 FPGAs, AVR Dude, SWD, a whole bunch of stuff, and it just works out of the box. And finally, it's open hardware. You can play with the schematic and lay out to your heart's content. So let's take a quick peek at it in action. Here's a case of a chip, the PCF8575 IO Expander, that has a simple protocol over I2C, but it's different than most IO expansers I've used, and I wasn't 100% certain I understood it. I want to play with these, but they're SMD components. I hate using the painstaking and brittle dead bug technique. So another thing I recommend is having a few of these little ZIF sockets for use with breadboards. Otherwise, uh, the little breakout PCBs are a good way to do it too. So I wired up a simple test circuit and pop in the ZIF breakout. The Tigard has a bunch of different headers and switches to set the voltage levels and modes by JTAG or I2C SWD. The I2C header has an annoying form factor though, but thanks to the SCEM, it's easy to see that the SCL is just shared with the SPI clock and the SDA with a Mozzie. So I hook up the Tigard to both power and I2C using the pins on the SPI header and have my test circuit here with the LEDs on the interrupt and one of the I.O. On the Computron, I whip up a bit of Python that includes functions I want to try out. Then I can just launch Python, import the module, and run things by hand. With the module plugged in through the USB-C connector, it's available on the laptop. If you ask PyFTDI to list the devices, it shows you two available. The Tigger docs have more info on this, but short version is that UART is on port 1 and all the rest share port 2. So I power the circuit externally, indicated by the blue LED here. Then I just import everything from the little module I wrote, create an instance of the IO expander class I defined. It has a utility method to dump the state of the IO pins. It's hard to tell here, but that interrupt LED is on and it is deasserted as soon as I perform the read. So the printout shows pin nine is low. That's because of the white wire pulling it to ground here. When I remove that jumper, that's a change to the IO. So the interrupt LED turns back on and goes back off when I perform the read. So inputs and interrupt are working. I also have a flash method to toggle any pin. Here I'll do it on pin 15, which is where the lead is tied. Works nicely too, cool. This makes the dev cycle and validating that I understand everything is working as expected uh, go super quick. Now some, including myself, would call me a cheap bastard, but I love finding useful and inexpensive tools like these to get the job done, and I've accumulated a number over the years. So if you like this kind of info, let me know and I'll present more. Anyhow, in that first example I was using I2C. In another case, I wanted to access the Caravel Housekeeping SPI bus on one of these ASICs produced for the Zero to ASIC course. In that case, flip the switch to SPI JTAG mode, wire appropriately, and go through the same process. And one thing is that you can choose to power your DUT from the Tigard, but you need to make sure you select the right voltage level. Now, I often work long and late and really hate frying a circuit because I make a dumb mistake. So rather than do that, I tend to leave it so the Tigard level shifters get their cue from the device itself. It means applying external power to your DUT, but also means no snafu is possible. The levels are always set from V target to whatever the device is using. Huzzah. Anyway, it took me some time to dig out the undocumented features, and there were a lot of unknowns for me in dealing with the Caravelle Spy uh, for the first time. But the Tigard and Python made experimenting super quick. Here you can see me set and clear the reset flag, which halts the onboard Caravelle CPU. Not all that impressive, but proof that the Tigard is talking over Spy and that my code is doing what it's supposed to do. Yay. And that's basically it. 
I'll post links to the documentation and the sample code I produced for both examples, which should be more than enough to get you started. Let me know if you have a Tigger or even better, uh, your experience with other similar tools you find awesome. Happy Dev. Thanks for watching. Cheers. <laughs>